Hey guys, my name is Kaylin Ellis and I want to start. Okay, this is too loud for me. Let me, let me go ahead and turn this down. All right, three, two, one. Hey guys, my name is Kaylin Ellis and I wanted to do a breakdown of all of my sounds and my tools in this series, which I don't have a name for right now. Um, but uh, if you guys end up liking this video or any of the content with me breaking down my sounds, uh, three, two, one. Hey guys, my name is Kaylin Ellis, and this is a video of me breaking down some of my tools. Uh, well, not just some, but all of my tools that I use for Ableton Live. Uh, some of those things range from instruments to effect racks to sound packs. And uh, yeah, it's for people who are curious about what my tools are, because I know you guys have seen me post a lot about my KFX rack, my memo piano, um, and even my like volume pack uh, series that I have currently going on at the moment. Um, these are for you guys. Uh, these videos and these next series of videos are going to be for guys who are curious about my sound packs and wanting to know what they sound like and whatnot. And so, um, if you guys end up liking this content, uh, hit the subscribe button and hit that little notification bell. Uh, that way we keep you guys up to date with what's going on. So Without further ado, uh, I want to break down one of my favorite devices called the KFX Rack. And hilariously enough, the KFX Rack is one of those devices that I have done many revisions on over the last like two years. Um, for those of you guys who know my work and what I do, I do use Ableton Live. Uh, I've been using Live 11 uh, for a, a shorter period of time. I didn't upgrade to Live 10, but before Ableton, I used to use this software called Sony Acid Music Studio. And Sony Acid was one of my favorite uh, um, programs to use and create in sound design. Uh, and so what was so convenient about it, they had this mixing agent where you could do everything effects wise in one space. And it was called acid effects. And for those of you guys who know my sound packs uh, and my tools that I use, you guys have seen me use acid effects on almost every Twitch stream and even my discord people who have copped acid effects know that's that's where it came from that's where the idea originated from and so this year 2023 this previous year 2023 um i wanted to make a newer re-endition of it but i'll give it a little more emphasis on the tools that i actually use uh to create my sounds and what's cool about the kfx it's like this beginning mixing agent where it can show you uh the absolute basics that you need to know in order to create sounds and sound design your own music and so um yeah i wanted to show you guys that process of how you can also integrate it into your process and so without further ado this is kfx um so let's see here. Let me load up KFX 2.1. All right. So KFX 2.1. All right. So I'm going to do a zoom in over here. So this right here is KFX uh, 2.1, that is. We just did an update where it can run on any version below a live 11.3. Uh, I know they just sent out an update, but this is for the very first version of Ableton Live 11. So if you do have a Live 11, you'll be able to add this into your sessions. Um, uh, but what we do have here is something that looks a little bit confusing, but I'll, I'll break it down, uh, as much as I possibly can. And so 
when you drag KFX into your Ableton session, you will notice a combination of colors and tones. Those colors and tones don't really mean much except for you knowing what what is. So uh, the labels of all these knobs here, you do have um, some some basic filtering options, but I'll go down down the list in a orderly fashion. Um, so to begin, uh, the first thing you have here is a knob that says mono. Now mono is a signal where you can have a singular mono signal that is not stereo. So if you want to turn a audio signal from stereo into mono, uh, this knob, does it okay it's just a simple click drag to 127 why is it 127 that's just how ableton built it i can't explain that um <laughs> and then next you have saturate uh actually let's go let's go even farther back than that so so this is a kfx rack and what is cool about this kfx rack uh is that this all uses the Ableton stock plugin. So there's no external plugins. There's no external um, things you need to add in order for it to run. All you need is the complete version of Ableton Live 11, which depends on what bracket you use. And it could be standard. It could be intro. It could be live light. As long as you have Ableton Live 11 and the stock audio effects, you will be able to run this audio rack on your session. Um, as well, this is also a Ableton Live 11.0 uh, uh, update. So the reason why it says 0 0.1 is because I, when I first dropped it, I didn't have it for the 11.0 version of Ableton. I only had it for 11.3. So that was the update. That's why it says 2.1. Um, but it uses all the stock uh, plugins, uh, in Ableton. And you guys will see as the video unfolds. Um, so in the very beginning on the very top and you, and this is basically how you go through the entire rack. You can go from this top all the way down to your right and you work yourself down and we'll break down all these functions of these knobs uh, and what they do and how you can utilize it. Um, so KFX, the first thing you have here is a mono knob. Now, mono versus stereo. Stereo is two signals, a left and a right, but mono is just one signal. Now, what's great about this knob is the fact that if you have a signal uh, which is, you know, in phase, have, has phase issues, or if you have a sample where like the polarity is crazy on that and whatnot, just switch this knob on. This knob is, is meant there. So you, it's, it's put there so you can be able to take any signal. And I mean, any signal that you have and you can throw it into a mono, mono signal. Now, it'll make more sense as we go along. The next thing we have is saturation. Saturation is a simple harmonic uh, process where you can drive the inputs of your signal to be a little bit more warmer, a little more hotter volume wise. Um, it also adds uh, a little bit of character to your signal as well. I like to use it on my drums. Saturation, what you guys primarily are hearing in my sessions whenever I mix my drums is the saturation knob. And it's a basic, very, very basic saturation knob that uses the saturation in Ableton. Uh, next up, we have the compression knob as well. The compression knob compresses signals. No matter signal you throw into here, it's a basic compressor that's built into Ableton and this this knob here. Um, the next thing now is going to be going more into audio processing. Uh, and so this one is a chorus. Now, this chorus uh, allows you to be able to multiply the signals uh, to have one or two or three different like channels of sounds. And it's very noticeable whenever you have a mono signal and you throw the mono signal into a chorus, it'll take that same signal and split it up into different 
voices. How many of you choose? And I'll explain that a little bit later. Uh, next up, we have a basic reverb um, uh, effects uh, knob here. And dry wet is basically, and it's funny, is all these are simple dry wet uh, knobs that you can utilize for Ableton Live. It's, it's, it's the basic turn it on, turn it off, but you can increase the amount that you want versus how much you don't want, which is why it says dry and wet. For those of you guys who don't mix, that's what that means. And for reverb amount, it's amount, it's the full amount of the reverb that you are utilizing so you can change the decay time for your reverb between like one second it can go between 200 milliseconds to 60 seconds so if you want to really make it dramatic this is a really good way to go um the next one is going to be delay uh delay is a simple thing uh, where it delays or creates a echo of your signal whatever signal you throw through kfx this thing here does it. Uh, you can also here to the right, add the amount of delay that you want. So if you really want to like go crazy with it, you can add the feedback and it even shows it here in the very bottom of the screen too. Um, the delay amount, uh, 95% or you just want to keep it simple. You can, um, now, now this is where this gets a little bit more detail oriented in what is different than my previous acid effects rack. What I did not have in my previous acid effects rack was this thing called low filters and high filters. So low filters basically uh, can cut the low filter and all you hear to the right of it are the higher filter frequencies. Same thing goes in opposition for the high filter. It just Basic, basic, <laughs> uh, uh, cut off your higher filter frequencies and the lows are more present, but they're sitting right next to each other. And the reason why it is, is so visually when you look at a low filter, the lows are filtered out and the highs are filtered out. So you won't have to think too much about the numbers and what does filtering mean? Like it's all there. Now, one of my favorite pieces of this this uh, Ableton rack here, which a lot of people controversial, con a, a little controversy behind it is that sample delay has uh, some quality issues. But for me, I like to play into those things where I can make the sample or the signal that you're sending into KFX delay itself by how much ever time you select. And you'll see in just a few moments, I have a basic loop uh, that I'll, I'll actually load up so I can show you guys um, all these functions. Actually, I should have done that the first place. Hold on. Let me let me add a little a little thing in here so y'all can see what's going on. I'm going to add just a basic. Let me add like a basic drum loop from volume five. All right, so this is going to be a basic drum loop from my volume five. I'm going to just run this on loop, not even sync it up to BPM. So I'll show you guys what it's doing. So you guys hear how that uh, drum loop sounds. So watch this. All these different parameters have some sort of effect. So I'll just play it. If you want to take that stereo drum loop and make it mono, this simple knob does it. So that's one thing. The saturation is another thing. Even though there's already saturation on it, you can hear it as soon as I add it. Watch this. So that's saturation. Uh, now compression, compression. Now here's the cool thing about this. Um, uh, I got to do this again. Um, so. Uh, the next thing we have after sample delay is bit reducer. Now, here's the cool thing about bit reducer. Bit reducer is what I like to simply call a 8-bit knob, if you know what I mean. Like, it almost has this chip tune quality to it. And this sits here for many reasons. It can be here for a sound design purpose or... 
you can make this thing sound a little bit more tailored to what you need in a mix. And we'll, we'll break that down with what that actually sounds like in just, just a few moments. Um, the lo-fi slope, uh, not lo-fi. Now the next knob next to this is called the LF slope. Now LF stands for low filter, uh, low filter, the slope on your filter. So it basically there's simple notches that Ableton has their filter, uh, used to cut frequencies off and they're usually sitting at a decibel amount and the usual slope that is sitting on your filters is usually between 12 decibels and 24 decibels and so the low filter slope and the high filter slope you guys will see has this funny cut that it does on your frequencies um i like to utilize this to be able to shape my snares and my kick drums um and so yes the low the, the low filter slope uh slopes the low filter so it can cut more of your lows and as well the high filter slope does the exact same thing just with the highs and you can be able to operate those however you want now, the last two knobs on this KFX rack uh, is the low filter envelope and the high filter envelope. These two uh, functions are envelopes where your signal can make your filter become a little bit automated or I wouldn't even say automated. Your envelope allows you to be able to open up frequencies by the amount of signal you have coming through the filter. And so it's a good way of like creating this automatic filter that responds to your signal. So let's say if audio is playing, right? And I want to be able to uh, have it feel like the, the filter is following the audio. Uh, what you would simply, simply do is if you want the high filters to pop out a little more you would turn on this knob and then go back to the high filter now watch this see that's pretty cool and you can even do the same thing with the low filters let's just go ahead and engage that as high as we possibly can now watch this so it's something simple like that you can it's a pretty simple way of uh, messing with your filters and envelopes. Um, and then as well, you'll be able to see here and here if you got, you got some good headphones. I'm using the IIIs, TMA2s. Anybody curious? Um, uh, but the low filters, I have the slopes where you can like cut your uh, notches to make them a little bit more cut versus a little bit more flat. So this is, this is a good example of it. Hear that slope? Same thing applies for the highs too. So that's a, 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 the a high filter slopes uh, for the KFX thing. And as well, and so next up, what we have here is a bit reducer. Now, the bit reducer is fascinating because, like I said earlier, 8-bit, right? Now, watch this. So it's sitting right there. It's just a simple knob that reduces the bits. And what's crazy is with all these, you can combine all these really wild effects. Uh, even this sample delay is a really good one. I personally use this just to drag certain beats behind, but I sometimes use this as a stylistic thing. And you'll hear what I mean in just a few moments. This is a good example. That sample delay. Um, and then as well, you got your basic reverb. Delay. Now here's the beauty behind this entire Ableton rack. So I'm curious, I'm sure you're curious about how I'm able to 
do all this with just those knobs. Well, Ableton has this very fascinating thing that I like to do whenever I'm making cool tools to use for Ableton. And what this is, is an audio effect rack. And so I took all of my favorite or just every single audio rack that Ableton has, and I made a chain out of it. And I'll show you in just a second. Peep this. All these elements are sitting in a chain. I'll even show you how I opened it up. See this little fascinating knob right here, this little button? This opens up all the effects that are controlled in this chain. So that low filter is the literal filter in Ableton. A high filter is the literal filter in Ableton. Um, as well, the chorus ensemble, this is in the new uh, Live 11. If you have 10 or 9, you might not see this. But that's the effect in chorus mode. So all of that is sitting right in there. Now, here's the cool part about it. How you can utilize this in your sessions. Let's just say, hypothetically speaking, you are asked to create I don't know, a crazy beat with with certain amounts of sounds in it, right? But they needed to be atmospheric and crazy. So I'm going to just pick a random drum loop and we're going to go from there. So let's go ahead and add. I'm going to just use one of these random loops. Let's see here. Yeah, that's it. That's that's a good one. Follow. Let's hit follow. Number two. All right. So now I'm just going to add, I'm going to just add some loops. Let's go to my sounds for my past loop, loop pack. Let's go to bass. Yeah. That's actually kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. Hold up. Let's just chop that up. Yeah. Let's see here. I can use this at the very end. Let's just duplicate this beat. Yeah, this is a basic setup just for a beat. And I'll just to give you guys an example. I'm gonna move this over to the right. Cut this off. Yeah. And I'll actually use this as this, the, the last note right here. And this is just a setup so I can show y'all how it works. Cut and boom. I just want to get that beginning. Now watch this. This is where KFX comes in and play. I'm going to just drag this delay behind. actually perfect now watch this this is how i can get crazy with the textures and how wild you can get with uh kfx i'm gonna drag this over here to this session this is also another good thing about kfx because there's no external plugins this is all streamlined so it's very quick on your system now watch this now if you want to go and just mess around
now let's duplicate this track and I'm gonna just make this thing a little lower. Let's hit warp, drop it an octave. Now as well, the drums are sitting there, but I need them to kind of hit a little bit. Now this is also a cool thing about the whole, about the whole session. You can take this whole thing and kind of create your own space, your own environment, your own creative thing for it. So uh, I'm gonna just leave this low on and I'm gonna turn them on and off periodically. Now this is also a cool thing that I love about KFX and how you can integrate it into your system. Because if you already have the sounds and everything, you could just sit here and just create your own thing off of it. Even because there's like delays and stuff, you can sit here and craft your own thing. So maybe I want to play with this KFX rack in a, a musical way, right? So I'm going to take this delay and start playing around with the beats on it. And let's lower this amount so you can see what I'm doing. So we're going to take this amount, make it zero. Now watch how this dry and wet uh, knob moves when I play this beat. Yeah, it operates as different types of agent, different types of like creative agents that you can use for your your setup. So I might actually record that. It actually, sounds kind of cool. And if you ever get curious about all these components, if you get curious about any of these components, you can go into the actual plugin or the actual like audio effect rack and dial those pieces in. I kind of want to make this this piano a little more dramatic, so we're just going to crank the heck out of this. This is also another plus behind it. You can take any of these audio racks, right? You can click it and reorder them in any fashion and none of these knobs will change. Look at this. Now watch this. actually drop that out make it a little yeah that's it boop right here turn this over here might actually mess with this a little bit turn that reverb to dry and wet off I realized I turned one of those off the wrong one. I turned, I got to turn this one on. Yeah, that's it. Turn this on. It should be all right. And even this too. Dry wet for this right here. This should go off. So we're going to turn this back to zero and you can automate with all this super quick. And I want to just dial all this stuff in. And if you thought I was like done, well, I could do a whole lot. I could do a whole lot. I have the KFX routed to my vocals. So if I want to sit here and record some of this stuff, it's already routed. <laughs> this is how I integrated in my session. Watch this. So yeah, for those of you guys who are curious about KFX, that's what that does. And so, yeah, man, uh, I hope you guys like that. If you want to see more of this, 
Um, comment down below. Hit like. Give me some suggestions in the comment section of what you guys want to specifically see. And I'll try and emulate it right here on uh, YouTube.